What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with industrial craft 2. Now today guys we're going to be messing around with nuclear reactors again except today we're going to be kicking up a notch and we're going to be upgrading our current nuclear reactor to a liquid cooled nuclear reactor. So this is a little bit more complicated and because of this there's a lot of stuff we need to do and I'm going to be splitting this into two different episodes. So today's episode is going to be just constructing and uh, setting up the whole nuclear reactor and then next episode is going to be us actually converting uh, the heat that we're going to be generating into steam which we will then generate uh or turn into eu so uh that's how it's going to be split up so it might be two shorter videos but that's mainly happening because i'm going to be recording these pretty much simultaneously or like one after another and uh that is because i have finals this week so i don't actually have as much time as i'd like but we're going to jump right into things so this chest right here is full of all the stuff that we are going to need for today so what we're going to have to do is create essentially a pump to pump water from an infinite source and we're going to hook that up and we're going to connect it to a fluid solid canning machine and we're going to use that to turn water that we're pumping into coolant using these lapis lazuli dusts and then we're going to be creating the reactor all these different reactor blocks so if you type in reactor that's not how you spell it okay here we go so if you type in reactor you get the reactor pressure vessel which is just the generic casing that is going to be surrounding the current nuclear reactor we have and it's going to be making a five by five casing that's going to have the nuclear reactor which at the biggest points is a three by three inside of it so it's going to fit perfectly in there and then we're going to need one redstone port which is going to allow us to control it we're going to need one access hatch which is going to allow us to actually access the reactor and change the configuration of it and setup of all the stuff inside of it and then we're going to be using two reactor fluid ports you need at least uh one of these but i'm going to use two of them just because of the efficiency and essentially what these can do is output the hot coolant and you can take in the uh regular coolant after you've cooled it or if you're inputting it for the first time now one thing that i want to note is we're going to go over this a little bit later but you can actually input and output from the same fluid port so that might be a little bit confusing but you'll understand why you can later so we need to get into crafting a little bit so the first thing we're going to be doing is crafting essentially uh, a lot of these reactor pressure vessels so we're going to be making two stacks which is why i've got all these right in here you don't need exactly two i believe you need for the setup we're doing 126 of these blocks total that includes crafting for the fluid ports access hatch and redstone port but uh, obviously we're not going to be able to make 126 we have to make 128 because it needs to be a factor of four so um yeah we're going to grab all of these out of here and start crafting so uh, it's gonna go like this and pretty easy split it up like this too and there we go so we got all the reactor pressure vessels and we can start crafting the rest of these which are actually relatively easy to craft it's gonna require two universal fluid cells a redstone and a trapdoor this trap door we're actually not going to be used for crafting right now we're going to be using it so that we can access a lower portion of the reactor because i am going to be moving it a little bit underground when we start crafting it so the rest of these are just going to be uh eight reactor pressure vessels surrounding whatever you're going to put in there so access hatch is going to be a trap door next one is going to be a piece of redstone uh next one it, we're actually going to be making two i should just fill this whole thing up and we're going to be making the fluid ports then we can grab the rest of these out of here and we should be good to go so now what we need to do is craft the pump and craft the fluid solid canning machine so that is going to require us to have all the goods i just pulled out pretty much just electronic circuits uh for this one we'll make the fluid solid canning machine first so we got that right there and now we can make the pump which is a little bit more annoying but it really isn't that expensive so throw those in there like so and there we go so now we got the pump we're gonna have to hook this up somewhere where we can put water down i'm questioning if i want to put it up here or if i want to put it downstairs not really sure um hmm I guess we can just put it up here yeah we can just do that we can put it up here and that should not be a problem so uh i do oh man i only have one one bucket of water so we're gonna have to go outside and fill this other one up oh you know what i don't even have on i don't even have my suit on right now let's throw on the quantum suit bodyguard and let's see if i remember how to turn this on so i want to say it was control m yeah there we go grab some water awesome okay yeah i remember how to do it 
Okay, also, if you're curious why I am wearing the scuba helmet and all that stuff, that is because I need to protect against radiation, and as far as I'm aware, uh, I did die. You might notice that I only have five levels, I usually have like 38 or something, but uh, I did die because I was moving some things around down here, and uh, unfortunately, I grabbed the quad fuel rods that are depleted uranium, and I died from radiation. So I didn't have this on, I wasn't thinking, and uh, I decided to put it on because we are going to be moving some more of these rods. Uh, okay, I already moved out the stuff from in here, but we are going to be moving these because we have to move this system all the way down. Uh, and we're actually not gonna be using the quad fuel rods for this. So that's why I have more up here. We're gonna be using the dual fuel rods and regular fuel rods. So that's what that is going to be for. Uh, we have the fluid ejector upgrades for, I actually don't know, no, we're not going to be using these necessarily today. We're going to put them in the reactor fluid ports, but we're not actually going to be using them for anything. Uh, we're going to use the universal fluid cells to actually transport the coolant. And then we've got all this lapis lazuli dust. I don't even know if we're going to need all of this, but um, when we start using this pump, and I guess we can just set it up up here for now, we can throw the pump right down here. And, oh, you know what? We will need one of these. Do we have it in our inventory? Yeah, we do. So we have a fluid ejector upgrade. We are going to need one of those for the canning machine, uh, which, hmm, I guess we can put this right here. The pump can go right here, and we can dig down in this direction to put the water down. So much stuff that I have to get done. I'm like, I'm forgetting what I'm trying to work on, and I'm starting to work on other stuff now, and it's pretty bad. Man, I should have turned on the jetpack again. Whatever. We need to put a wire down here, then, for the pump. Let me... Okay, control M. No. Control M. Oh, I took it off. That's right. Oh, what the heck? No. 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 Oh my god, we're gonna die. Oh, we're not gonna die. Okay, this is taking damage for us. Right? Oh, we're not di What? What? We are on hard, right? Yeah, okay, that was really weird. That was really, really weird. Okay, we got out without needing that. Um, I guess it's because we are we have radiation, but we put the hazmat suit on, and that counteracts the effect. That was really weird, but whatever. I won't make that mistake again. I forgot I have those in my inventory right now. So now we need to shift this down. There we go. And it should be pumping things out. That is great. We can put in the fluid ejector upgrade, throw the fluid solid canning machine down right above it, and we need to switch this to the fill cell from tank no fluid enriched that's what we need so then we're going to throw these in the center and it should start making coolant which we are going to put into we need to put it into these cells right here but can we not put those in until there's something in there to put in the cells no huh how do i get it into these cells i actually do not know Oh, we can flip them. Oh, that is so weird. So maybe we enrich them and then we flip them and we fill a cell from the tank. That's interesting. Okay, well, we're going to let this thing go. Uh, we'll leave it up here and hopefully, yeah, it'll be able to fill its entire internal tank up. Um, now we're going to go downstairs and actually start building this thing, which is going to be the fun part. So what we need to do... Uh, also, I want to check on this system right here. It seems to be running. It's filling this thing up pretty nicely. But what we're going to be doing is uh, reconfiguring this whole area, essentially. So, unfortunately, I didn't grab any ladders, which I'm going to do really quick, because we're going to be going up and down there a little bit. Uh, I should also eat, because I am hurt right now. Yeah, we're going to grab some ladders from in this really... Okay, I have four. Hopefully, that'll be enough. We can, we can craft a couple more. Let's just make some more just to be safe so we don't get stuck down there. Okay, so we're going to ladder down and then we're going to start constructing this thing. So we can break all of these right here. And yeah, we should be good. So we need a 5x5 five five area, 5x5x5 five by five by five area. So right now that is right here. So we are going to mine into here just so we can throw the ladders down. Oh, no. Okay, so we do need to go somewhere else. On one of the other sides because that is running into the water for our pump right there we should be able to go closer over here then let's try right here should be good yeah we can just fill this up right here cool okay so we can put the ladders right here so that we can get down here uh if we need to eventually and we should be able to go like this so that we can walk all the way across okay there we go awesome so to start things out essentially 
Uh, I want to say this is similar to... I can't even remember what mod it's from. Is it is it a Railcraft tank or something? I'm not actually sure, but... Um, I guess I shouldn't have said that. But uh, it's similar to like a big reactor in the sense that you pretty much build the whole thing out of these pressure vessels. And then there's a couple things that are required, like the fluid port, the redstone port, the access hatch and all that. Um, like you do need one access hatch, you do need one redstone port. And I've been told you need two fluid ports, but I find that hard to believe considering you can input and output from the same one. I don't know if people realize that when you're using the liquid heat exchanger. If you are using other things like build craft pipes or such, you actually can't do that. Uh, so that is one perk of using IC2 stuff like the liquid heat exchanger, which eventually you will need to use. If you just put that directly up against a fluid port, you can pull in and output uh, from the same thing. So that is one perk of it. But uh, I want to say that you need only one. I've been told you need two, though. So I'm not actually sure about that. But um, yeah, so we're going to be using two. But essentially, these can be put anywhere on this system and you fill in the rest with these pressure vessels. And that's all you got to do. So right now, we're not actually going to put anything down here, really. Uh, we might put the redstone control down here eventually. But what I'm planning on doing is making this flush with the ground right here. And unfortunately, I am going to actually need to remove this. So we should probably do that right now. So this whole system needs to get removed. And that means that a lot of this stuff is going to... I, I don't know if it just falls on the ground or what. So let's wrench all of these off. Oh, it starts... Oh, okay, so... We need to go up here, charge the wrench up, and while we're at it, we need to start moving stuff into this chest. And it's not even going to all fit in this chest, but that is perfectly fine because we are going to be using pretty much, we're going to be using 26 of these overclocked heat vents, which is kind of important. Um, so what we can do is just, man, this is going to be rough. You know, what? I'm actually going to hop off camera and do this because this is going to require a lot of moving stuff back and forth to actually fully disassemble this. So I will be back in one second. Okay, guys, so we are back, and I actually cleaned up a good amount of this, but it's actually okay. I just completely removed the center block of it, the actual reactor portion of it, and that contained most of the stuff, so there's a lot of junk down there, and a lot of it's sitting in here. So the main thing I want to do is make sure I actually get that full reactor block uh, and a lot of this stuff so it doesn't despawn, but uh, what we're going to be doing is, so we got the reactor chamber, and we need to, we need to get this reactor block right here. This is the important one. So we got the nuclear reactor block, and this one is going to be going uh, not right here, but above this block. So we do need to put down one kind of placeholder block right now and put down the nuclear reactor. So let's get out the pick. And now we can completely surround it with the reactor chambers again and start refilling it. So that's why we don't really need to worry about getting rid of all this stuff is because we can start refilling it now. Uh, what we're going to be putting in there is actually going to be pretty much just these uh, overclocked heat vents. That's really all we're going to be using. So I want to see if we can stack these. They should be able to kind of stack. You can see some of them are stacking. Uh, okay, so these really don't want to stack, unfortunately. So we need to start throwing things in here. Uh, and it's going to be going in slightly. like It's going to be like a pattern, uh, not a huge pattern, but let me just... You know what, we'll trade out a bunch of this stuff in here. So we'll just dump a bunch of random junk in there and start pulling these out. So we're going to be going like this and essentially just surrounding what we're going to be putting in here. We do leave empty space. I'm not exactly sure why necessarily, but uh, what I've heard people speculate about is that it is kind of to be realistic in the sense that you want open space in there so that your coolant can flow around your fuel rods. And that does actually make sense because once you get this whole system up and running, uh, oh, you know, what? we don't have the top one on right now. I don't know why I haven't thrown that on yet. But once we get the whole system up and running, you'll be able to see that if you break into it, you actually will have like not like you will have actual liquid hot coolant that could spill out on you. So that is one thing that's pretty cool. Um, it makes me believe that these open spaces are for that coolant to kind of work around the fuel rods, but we need to make sure we get all of these, uh, heat vents and throw them in here correctly. So it's pretty much just a symmetrical design and where are the rest of them? Oh, they're like all over here. Okay. So we're going to be throwing them in like this and like I said, symmetrical design. So it looks like we're missing two of them, I think. Uh, there are a couple extra. I think we used 26 in this design and the previous design used 28. I want to say that's the right number, but, uh, let's dump a lot of this stuff back in here so we can get 
all of it, make sure none of it despawns. It looks like we are missing one of them, assuming I didn't misplace one in here. I don't believe I misplaced one. This is similar to this, blah, 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 over, under. Yep, so that looks pretty similar. It could be, could be hidden down here, let's see. No, it is not, okay. So, oh, is it right up there? Yes, it is, okay. What? Oh, it's on top of that block? There we go. Okay, so we didn't lose anything. Now we can grab out the stuff that we're gonna be using, which is just going to be the dual fuel rods and the regular fuel rods. So we're gonna need, for each loading of this, we're gonna need four regular fuel rods and 10 dual fuel rods. So these ones are going to be going right here, right here, right here, and right here. And these will be going, and obviously it's still symmetrical. Uh, thank God, because I can't stand things that aren't symmetrical. So this is the setup. There is a lot of open space. Uh, I'm actually not gonna throw in these reactor platings right now because I don't know how those function with this whole setup, but you shouldn't need to worry about this thing possibly exploding. I haven't actually tested it out fully yet, but in theory, it should not explode. This is a pretty common design for this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna continue filling up this area with this pressure vessel, or these pressure vessels, I should say, and this will be the last layer before we actually put on the top of it. Oh man, I'm getting stuck under here. Okay. So yeah, there, I am going to have to do a little bit of reworking down here just because this is going to start running into these wires. The only problem or the only reason that it's not going to be a problem is because this thing does not output EU. Okay. That's the difference. This one is going to output hot coolant, which we are then going to turn into steam, which we are then going to turn into EU. So that's the difference. Um, Oh gosh, okay, so that's right. I was I just started mindlessly putting these down. So we actually don't want them to get put down like this. What we're gonna be doing is breaking this one. We actually might need to throw on. Yeah, I don't think we have anything in our inventory right now. It's gonna be an issue. Oh, do we need to wrench these? Oh, are they really hard to break? Okay, please don't get rid of this. They just seem like a really difficult block to break. Okay, so there we go. Control M, turn that on turn it off okay so we're gonna put two openings here and I kind of screwed up I wasn't thinking about this before but this is where the uh, fluid ports are going to go and then right here in the center this is where the access hatch is going to go um, and then right next to that is where we're going to put the redstone port so eventually I might move the redstone port depending on how it interacts with the rest of the design I do want it to be easy to access so I can shut it off if I really need to, but I also don't want it to be getting in the way at all. So uh, we need to actually start filling this thing in now. So the access hatch is going to go right here. You can see if we click on it right now, we get the nuclear reactor. That's because this whole system isn't fully filled in yet. But once we put down these two fluid ports and this redstone port, we can put that right there. We can access this and now it's got a different UI. It actually looks a lot cooler. Same thing, core temp, but output is now in heat units per second, not EU per tick. So this is gonna be completely different. This is what's going to be uh, essentially heating up the coolant, which is going to be filling in this area right here. And the hot coolant is going to be over with the red side. I said right here, but you guys actually can't see my mouse. So the blue side is the coolant. The red side is the hot coolant. And that's what we're going to be pumping out using these fluid ports. And you can see if you hover over this, it says place fluid ejector upgrade to pump, uh, to pump, to pump out hot coolant. Huh? Okay. Well, that's a typo, but whatever. Uh, we get the point. So essentially we have the fluid ejector upgrades in here and Eventually, this is where we're going to start off next episode. That's going to be, we're going to pump out into liquid heat exchangers and start creating steam and all that good stuff uh, using a closed cycle with superheated steam and distilled water and all that good stuff. But we are now up here and ready to grab this coolant. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you do want to use less lapis dust, you can use one lapis dust per bucket if you use distilled water, but I'm not using that right now just because I don't feel like getting it. I have way more than enough lapis. I still have like two or three stacks left. So uh, what we can do now is I think we can drain from cell into tank, fill cell from tank. So let's flip this. Okay, does this wanna, is this gonna fill these cells right here? I think it should, yeah. Okay, so this should fill these cells. It's only gonna fill eight of them. We can move those down there. Essentially, you don't need a consistent production of coolant. That's the really cool part about this is that when it's running, essentially you create hot coolant, 
uh, you, or you turn liquid coolant into hot coolant with heat, and then you cool that down and put it back in the system. So it's constantly, it's a pretty much a cycle of flowing coolant. So you get a certain amount in there. I don't know if this will be enough. We might need a little bit more um, based on how fast the system is, but uh, essentially you create a closed cycle for both the coolant and eventually the steam, because I believe once you put it through, you can condense it back down into distilled water. And the reason we'll eventually use distilled water for creating the steam, and I'll talk more about this next episode, is because uh, you don't want crystallization in your steam generator, and that will happen if you don't use distilled water, because there are imperfections in regular water, and distilled water uh, doesn't have any, so... That's the whole reasoning behind that. Now, I'll just grab these out right now and put them in so you guys can see how we actually do this. And then we'll call it a day and I will finish moving the rest of it off camera. But essentially what you can do is go in here, shift click these in one at a time and it will dump the coolant in there. And what we can actually do is flip on a lever in a minute and I'll show you guys it will turn into hot coolant. Um, so we're not gonna do too much of it, but we are going to throw a lever right on here we access this you can see that it's got nothing going on if we flip it you can see it starts generating heat units very fast creating hot coolant and I do want to flip it off just because uh, it can start generating like extra heat and if it blows through the coolant it can start you know getting into the heat vents it's the same idea that once you run out of coolant uh, it starts getting these things really hot so it's important that you get the right amount of coolant going uh, back and forth so we might actually need more of these ports just if we need faster conversion from hot coolant to actual coolant but we'll talk about all that next episode i'm starting to kind of ramble on at the end of this one but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you found it entertaining or informative in any way feel free to give it a like and uh, i just want to say again at the end of the video because i'm sure all the people that comment always wait until the end uh so i don't want to kind of bore people in the beginning with this but i do want to say thank you guys for being so great with the comments um, a lot of you guys have been asking about my grades and stuff and how college is going. And I talked a little bit about it last episode. Um, and it might seem stupid, but I really do appreciate your guys' interest in that because, I mean, that's, that's kind of my life right now. So, um, yeah, I don't really have any crazy stories to ever tell you guys, unfortunately, from college because my days do consist of me just sitting in my room, uh, either doing homework or getting ready to record a video or watching Netflix and procrastinating. But, um... Hopefully, eventually, I will have some stories to tell you guys and some fun stuff about college that I can let you know about. But uh, as always, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I will talk to you guys later.